Welcome back to the Fundamentals of Operating Systems based on the textbook Operating System Concepts 10th edition by Silbershots, Gagne, and Galvin. Published by Wiley Publishing. In the last lesson we were discussing the problem of thrashing as a result of page replacement algorithms for demand paging. In this lesson, we're going to continue on and discuss the work and set model. So let's get started. The work and set model is based on the assumption of locality that we talked about in the last lesson. This model uses a parameter, delta, to define the work and set window. The idea is to examine the most recent delta page references. In other words, the pages that make up what we would refer to as a working set is expressed by delta. The set of pages in the most recent delta page references is the working set as shown at the bottom of the screen. If a page is in active use, it will be in the working set. If it's no longer being used, it will drop from the working set delta time units after its last reference. In other words, after the system has passed through all of the other units of the set. Therefore, the working set is an approximation of the program's locality. For example, given the sequence of memory references shown here, if delta equals 10 memory references, then the working set at the time T1 is 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. Notice 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. By time T2, the working set has changed to 3 and 4. Notice 3, 4, 4, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 4, 4. So 3, 4 makes up this working set. The accuracy of the working set depends upon the selection of delta. If delta is too small, it will not encompass the entire locality. If delta is too large, it may overlap several localities. In the extreme, if delta is infinite, the working set is a set of pages touched during the process execution. The most important property of the working set, then, is its size. If we compute the working set size as shown here, for each process in the system, we can then consider the total demand for frames. We'll use the variable D to represent the demand. Each process is actively using the pages in its working set. If the total demand is greater than the total number of available frames, thrashing will occur because some processes will not have enough frames. Once work and set windows have been selected, use of the work and set model is simple. The operating system monitors the work and set of each process and allocates to that work and set enough frames to provide it with the work and set size. If there are enough extra frames, another process can be initiated. If the sum of the work and set sizes increases, exceeding the total number of available frames, the operating system selects a process to suspend. The process's pages are written out, or swapped, and its frames are reallocated to other processes. The suspended processes can be restarted later. This work and set strategy prevents thrashing while keeping the degree of multiprogramming as high as possible, so it optimizes CPU utilization. The difficulty with the work and set model is keeping track of the work and set. The work and set window is a moving window. At each memory reference, a new reference appears at one end, and the oldest reference drops off the other end. A page is in the working set if it's referenced anywhere in the working set window. We can approximate the working set model with a fixed interval timer interrupt and a reference bit. For example, assume that the working set window equals 10,000 references. 
and that we can cause a timer interrupt every 5,000 references. When we get a timer interrupt, we copy and clear the reference bit values for each page. Therefore, if a page fault occurs, we can examine the current reference bit and two in-memory bits to determine whether a page was used within the last 10,000 or to 15,000 references. If it was used, at least one of these bits will be on. If it's not been used, these bits will be off. Pages with at least one bit on will be in the working set. Note that this arrangement is not entirely accurate because we cannot tell where within the interval of 5,000 a reference occurred. We can reduce the uncertainty by increasing the number of history bits and frequency of interrupts. However, the cost to service these more frequent interrupts will be much higher. The working set model is successful and knowledge of the working set can be useful for pre-paging, but it seems a clumsy way to control thrashing. A strategy that uses page fault frequency takes a more direct approach. The specific problem is how to prevent thrashing. Thrashing has a high page fault rate. Therefore, we want to control the page fault rate. When it's too high, we know that the process needs more frames. If the page fault rate is too low, then the process may have too many frames. We can establish upper and lower bounds of the desired page fault rate as shown in this figure. Here's the lower bound, here's the upper bound. If the actual page fault rate exceeds this upper bound, we allocate the process another frame. If the page fault rate falls below this lower limit, we remove a frame from the process. So we can directly measure and control the page fault rate to prevent thrashing. As with the work and set strategy, we may have to swap out a process. If the page fault rate increases and no free frames are available, we must select some process and swap it out to secondary storage. The freed frames are then distributed to processes with high page fault rates. Practically speaking, thrashing and the resulting swapping have a irritating high impact on performance. The current best practice in implementing a computer system is to include enough physical memory, whenever possible, to avoid thrashing and swapping. From smartphones through large servers, providing enough memory to keep all working sets in memory concurrently, except under extreme conditions, provides the best user experience. So, virtual memory abstracts physical memory into an extremely large uniform array of storage. The benefits of virtual memory include a program can be larger than physical memory. A program does not need to be entirely in memory. Processes can share memory. And processes can be created more efficiently. Demand paging is a technique whereby pages are loaded only when they're demanded during program execution. Pages that are never demanded are therefore never loaded into memory. We get a page fault when a page that is currently not in memory is requested. The page must then be brought from secondary storage into an available page frame in memory. Remember copy on write. This allows a child process to share the same address space as its parent. But if either the child or the parent process modifies a page, then a copy of the page is made. When available memory is low, a page replacement algorithm selects an existing page in memory to replace with a new page. And we talked about page replacement algorithms, including first in, first out, optimal, and least recently used.
And we also found out that pure, least recently used algorithms are not practical. Most systems use a least recently used approximation. And global page replacement algorithms select a page from any process in the system for replacement, while local page replacement algorithms select a page from a faulting process. And then we talked about thrashing and that it occurs when a system spends more time paging than executing. Well, that takes care of our discussion of probably the most significant management system of the operating system, the memory management system. We've looked at two units on that topic. The first unit was more or less historical, talking about early memory management systems. This unit is the modern version of memory management system in computer systems. It allows a process to function without necessarily having to load the whole thing into memory. And that feature allows more processes to run at the same time and the system to operate more efficiently. So, go back and study your notes, finish up your study guide, Get it completed and turned in. Come on back and we will proceed to examine the operating system's management of the file system.